Okay, the meeting will be in order. This is the preliminary business meeting, the 72nd World Science Fiction Convention. I'm uh, Tom Leeslake, your chair. At the rear we have uh, Lisa Hayes, the official videographer. Uh, to my right, uh, your left, is Jill Eastlake, who is the timekeeper. And on my left, your right, is Linda Denneroff, the secretary who actually does all the work. Let <laughs> me <laughs> um, get some uh, preliminary things out of the way here. Uh, one is that if you have a uh, obnoxious uh, sound making device, you should avoid using it to make sound during the meeting. Maybe your cell phone should be set to vibrate or something like that. Uh, we are being recorded in the back, and we might occasionally have to pause for uh, technical reasons to do that. Uh, anybody can record or photograph the meeting if they choose to do so. Uh, the meeting can order that to cease for some period, but uh, we never actually have it, at least not that I can recall. Um, there are usually ribbons for people who attend uh, the, the business meeting, and I understand that such ribbons exist, they just aren't actually here yet, but we'll soon that. So presumably uh, tomorrow or something, uh, such ribbons will exist. It's a plot to make you all come back tomorrow. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess that, you know, I could uh, speak uh, to a greater or lesser extent about uh, procedure, but uh, uh, for the people, well, a lot of people I think have been here before. How many people have uh, not been to a business, what's this business meeting before? Uh, um, welcome, okay. And uh, so, so there was a panel yesterday on uh, procedure. Um, we tend to follow Robert's Rules of Order fairly closely with our own variations that are in the standing rules that are in the uh, souvenir book uh, and we're also in progress report uh, 2, progress report 2 had those in it. Uh, so although we, we follow the rules pretty rigorously, uh, I, I try to apply them with some liberality when appropriate and uh, if you have, if you want to do something and you don't know how to do it or confused about the situation, uh, within reason, you can certainly ask what's going on and I'll try to answer you or assist you in composing a motion or something like that. Uh, but we do have a lot of business, so we do have to kind of move along here. Uh, and so I, I tend not to uh, pause for great periods of time. Like if I call for objections, I tend to, or something like that, I tend to move on pretty quickly. Uh, if you aren't happy when I call for objections, you should indicate that like right away, uh, but actually until we've really, I sort of gotten to the end and stating the next item, you can usually still object to the previous one. So it doesn't have to, you don't have to do it before I begin the next uh, thing we're going to do, it's, but you have a little bit after that. Uh, so to get recognition, if you want to speak uh, or make a motion, uh, the best thing to do is stand up uh, and uh, you can say, Mr. Chair, or something like that, whatever, Mr. Chairman whatever you feel like. <laughs> hey, you bit, but, you know. uh, but it, it's important to know that we don't keep a cue or anything. We alternate between speeches in favor or against. If you want to move some cross procedural amendment, like amend or refer to a committee, you can do that either time if it's not considered to be for or against. Um, but you have to wait until the previous speaker has finished. And the way you can tell is they sit down. <laughs> Uh, the fact that they have paused does not necessarily mean they finished speaking. Mr. Chairman, yeah. stepping away from the microphone. Uh, stepping away from the microphone would work here. Yes, yeah, so we, we do have this problem of acoustics, and um, this, uh, the camera is catching the area, essentially the field of view of the table in front here. We have a microphone here. If you're just making a motion, some simple motion, then I will repeat it normally anyway, so you're, you're fine. But if you want to actually speak and debate and say something in, in favor or against, some motion, then coming up to the microphone would be uh, an excellent idea. Uh, so, um, I don't know if there's anything else I need to do right now. The primary, uh, uh, the, the first priority of the preliminary business meeting is to set the debate times for items which will come up tomorrow. 
at the main business meeting, or at the, to sort of dispose of them in some cases if we can at, the, at this meeting. And uh, the, the first items on the agenda are the constitutional amendments which were passed uh, last year at uh, Lone Star Con and have come up uh, to this meeting for ratification. And uh, in each case, I will propose a time limit. Uh, if people don't like it, uh, they can certainly suggest another if people really don't hesitate to do so. Um, so I have uh, come up with ones, and uh, I think they're somewhat strict, except in the first case, because the first item of business always seems to attract more uh, debate. <laughs> people start off with a lot of energy before they get worn down by the new. So item 1.1, short title of two-thirds is enough, part one. Uh, I propose a debate time limit of eight minutes. Is there any other values proposed? Sure. Two minutes. Uh, any other values? Okay. Uh, we will vote between eight and two. All those in favor of eight, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those in favor of two. I believe the twos have it, so the late time is set at two minutes. Uh, item 1.2, uh, short title, Two Thirds is Enough, Part 2. Uh, I propose a uh, debate time of four minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes for the vote. Any other values? We will vote. Between, and if it's not seeing any other values or debate, we'll vote between four and two. All those in favor of four minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those in favor of two minutes. Uh, thank you. Overwhelmingly for two minutes. Item 1.3, short title, A Matter of Trust. I uh, propose a time limit of four minutes for this. Any other values proposed? Two minutes. Two minutes. Any debate? All those in favor of four minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those in favor of two minutes. Thanks. Four minutes has it. Wistless Accountability, item 1.4. The Wistless Accountability Act of 2013 is actually the short title. I propose a big time of six minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Other values? Four. Four. Five. Okay. Yeah. So basically, we, we, unless there's some objection, when we have multiple values, we usually do the procedure called filling the blank, which means we vote on them in some kind of logical order, uh, vote for and against each value until a value achieves a majority, and we stop with that value. And in the case of time limits, we start with the longest uh, time. Values are six, five, four, and two. Uh, those in favor of six minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it, and it's six minutes. Next item. Uh, hey, excuse me, did somebody just enter the meeting? Uh, donate. So the uh, attendance lists are work. Oh, they're in the corner. So if you, want to, if you want to mark the attendance list, it's right there. Uh, you're welcome. Happy to embarrass you this way anytime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other people who haven't signed the attendance list are welcome to do so. Wait a second until I secretary. Six minutes for this. 
Any other value you suggested? Two minutes. Anything else? Four. Okay. Six, four, two. Anything else? All those in debate? All those in favor of six minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed to six minutes? I believe the no's have it. So we'll continue. Uh, those in favor of four minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it, and it's time to wait. Let me just set it to four minutes. Six minutes for this. Two. Two. One. one. Oh. We have six, two, one. Is there any other? Five. Okay. Anything else? Any debate on the debate time? Okay. Uh, those in favor of six minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Uh, the no's have it. Uh, those in favor of five minutes, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Have it. Those in favor of two minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? And the ayes have it, and it's big time to set it two minutes. And uh, the last business passed on. I have 1.7. Short title, we don't need another hero. So uh, there was some question about this as to why 3.2.1 through 3.2.4 are listed here, but the subsequent 3.2.Xs are not listed here. And um, I'm not entirely sure why it's that way, but, oh, it's on its, I mean, the agenda is 3.4, which is actually correct. Right? Yeah, so, so the 3.4 numbering is correct of the agenda. Nevertheless, the question was why the subsequent 3.x.1 <laughs> were not listed. I guess 3.4.1 were not listed. Uh, and um, what happened, well, what is intended? And, and the, as far as I can determine, and the, what we're going on is that the intent is really to amend only uh, the dot 3 uh, section. That is, only 3.4.3 is changing, and all of the subsequent change sections, 3.4.x, including those not listed here, uh, remain as is. So the strikeout and insert is just as shown in 3.4.3, just to clarify what's going on there. Uh, so, in any case, we need to set a debate limit for this, and uh, unless the business meeting wishes otherwise, I set the debate limit at 12 minutes. There other suggestions? Five. Five. Anything else? Okay. Those in favor of 12, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Uh, Nays have it. Those in favor of 5, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. We can just set it 5 minutes. Now move on to section 2. <coughs> yeah. These are really bad five minutes. That's fine. <clears throat> so, uh, 2.1.1, short title, popular ratification. I that modifies the U.S. the U.S. U.S. Constitution. Shown here <laughs> uh, by striking out and inserting words in various sections um, in 6.6, uh, .6, section on amendments to the Constitution. And uh, the concept is that instead of Constitution amendments being passed at one business meeting and ratified at the following business meeting, they would be passed at one business meeting and then ratified by a, uh, a popular uh, referendum among the society members. Um, I guess. Yeah. This is the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, given the complex nature of this, uh, I was suggesting that if there were questions about the effect or how it was written, that it would be worthwhile for this meeting to consider this motion as if it committee the whole for a few minutes with me holding the floor and addressing questions. Uh, I don't know if there are technical questions about it, however, given yeah. the nature of this. Yeah. Uh, right I do have a question. So. Okay, well, we, 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 the in question is do we want to do that? Uh, do we want to consider this informally for a bit as a, as a committee of the whole? Uh, is there a second for doing that? Uh, all those in favor of uh, entering the committee of the whole? Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. We're in the quasi committee of the whole. And I, I just, it, it, unless there's, um, the intent is to not discuss the merits of the motion at all, if we can avoid that. Uh, but I, I wish to, uh, Mr. Chairman, I wish to entertain questions on the effect of this and try and address them. And uh, I, I, the chair has to call on people, but I'll yield, I will, I will blanketly yield the time for this purpose. Okay. okay. Uh, he, he did say as quasi committee of the whole is what he actually said, although he put it as committee of the whole. And in quasi committee of the whole, the chairman of the business meeting. I'm sorry. I just <laughs> is ratified by a simple majority at the business meeting, and you're changing it to ratified by a vote of the members. What is required for, like, it doesn't specify majority. Shouldn't we do that? Uh, item, Mr. Chairman, items, uh, uh, element 6.6.5. Any amendment that receives more yes votes than no votes shall be ratified. Am I correct? Sorry, John Conrad. Am I correct then that ratification would be done solely by ballot and not at a vote in the business meeting under your proposal? Uh, Mr. Chairman, that is indeed the attempt. It is intended that this would be elected, that motions would, or yeah, proposals would be ratified by ballot vote of the entire membership of the following year's World Cup. Very similarly to how we currently elect select sites, but some of you may be aware that we used to select sites at, by show of hands at the business meeting. We don't do that anymore. Or by ballot of the business meeting. Yes, Dan. Uh, yeah, Danielle. No. Yeah. Um, would it be feasible to amend this so that we required that a business meeting make the initial vote, that a subsequent business meeting make a secondary vote the next year, followed by a mail ratification? Um, Mr. For the record, the question was whether it would be possible to change this so that you would have the required passage of one business meeting, ratification of the second business meeting, and then re-ratification by a vote of the society, so there would be three stages of approval. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I tend, for shorthand purposes, I call that two plus one, whereas the proposal as written as one plus one. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I see nothing infeasible about amending this proposal so that it becomes we exactly as Mr. Yalo said, we would, uh, instead of changing the current system from vote one year and ratify by the members the next, we would vote one year, ratify at the business meeting the next year, and submit to the members of the third year. Yes, that would extend the ratification process to three years. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Somebody else has asked what we have. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, Joni Dashoff, how does this vote then proceed, the one written? Well, not the uh, Mr. Chairman, the question was, what would be the mechanics of actually voting? Yeah, the, yes. the question was, what are the mechanics of this popular ratification vote among the membership of the society? Item 6.6.3, .6 or paragraph 6.6.3 .6 in this, ratification voting should be available at least during the same time as the site selection and ratification ballots should be distributed at the same time as site selection ballots. Uh, essentially, it would be uh, you would be able to vote by ballot either in advance or at the con, similar to the way we do site selection voting. It would be pieces of paper distributed in advance or at the con. All right. So what I didn't quite clarify is who's collecting and tabulating these. It would be uh, the question was who would collect and tabulate the votes. 
This would be a responsibility of the administering Worldcon, just as it is currently a responsibility of the current Worldcon to run site selection. So you're not right. saying this is necessarily site selection, it's just the style of it is in the style of it is not it is not the Mr. Chairman it is not the intent of this motion to assign detailed <laughs> operational responsibilities to individual members of Worldcon committees it is intended to say you are going to do this approximately the same way you do that okay. how you actually implement it as a Worldcon committee is up to you for those of you who do you're, not you're, know you're, I am the site I'm, selection I'm, admin for Susquehanna let's see if we have another question here if you want to floor you should stand. Okay. What's the impetus for this change? I mean, correct system doesn't seem to be broken in my mind. That seems to get into debate. Yes, know. Mr. Chairman, I do not intend to address questions asking the substantive purpose of the motion at this time. Yeah. Winston Matthew, why is it paper? Why not electronic? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't. I, I don't really want to get into implementation details of the motion. That is substantive. I don't have I don't have a strong opinion on it, but it is intended uh, basically because. Uh, but the quickest version of it is it is defined in terms of how we do site selection voting. Not saying that the site selection administrator must run it, but it is defined in terms of how do we do site selection. We would administer the ratification elections in the same way. If we should, which does actually leave possibility of electronic voting, just as electronic voting for site selection is potentially possible. It would be left up to the administering convention to deal with it. You know? Can you use the mic? You're going to need to talk to a microphone because no one can hear you except me. Is it the intention then, if this takes place, to uh, place all the um, items of the list of the Constitution subject to ratification to have them printed on the ballot form along with the uh, proposed amendments? I, I'm not sure what the question is. Anything that was going to be, just as we currently get an agenda with those items that are up for ratification, the members of the following WorldCon would get a list of here are the proposed changes that are up for ratification, yes or no. Um, hey. Mr. Chairman, um, 6.6.2 in the proposal reads, any member eligible to cast a site selection ballot may vote on the ratification of pending constitutional amendments in the same manner as section 4.1. 4.1 is site selection. However, no fee beyond membership in the administering convention shall be required to vote on the ratification. <laughs> that I will be introducing a motion when it becomes in order to appoint a committee to come back with a completed two plus one motion using Kevin's terminology. And I would be recommending that that committee report back next year because given the complexity of this motion, I do not believe we can disentangle things, pick up all the technical points, and come back with with a perfected 2.1 motion if we have to do it on the fly. And would you like to move to the committee of the whole round? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, is there any objection? Hearing none, uh, we're out of the advisory committee of the whole. Um, and uh, uh, Chair recognizes the shell. I wish to make a motion that we refer this to a committee to report back with a perfected 2.1 amendment uh, to the Constitution, standing rules, and many other documents. Uh, that committee to report back next year because I don't believe we can get it fixed in time. Is there a second to this motion? Second. Uh, debate on the motion to commit. Mr. Chairman, I suggest the committee consist of myself and Mr. Yellow. <laughs>
And not only the thoughts are a bad idea, but some humble committee of exactly two people, such as some possibility of a deadline. <laughs> Is there any further debate? Uh, yes. Yeah. I think Mr. Allen might have meant 2.1.1. He said two plus one. He has the character screen lines. There's no, no, no periods in there, only a plus sign. Okay. Is there any further debate on the motion to commit? Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Because uh, Josh Prendell. Who's against? Um, the um, the problem. No. Sure. Um, uh, do we really need to make it harder to amend the Constitution? Is there a vote in... Uh, that was, against referring, I guess. Is there a vote in favor, uh, especially in favor of referring to committee? If, if we don't accept the current motion to refer, then this will come up uh, tomorrow for a debate and uh, possible approval or any, it would, uh, you know, we could, we could do various lots of things tomorrow. <laughs> uh, a vote, uh, especially a speech in favor of the motion to commit, in favor of committing. Speech against uh, committee? committee? Yes? Martin Easterbrook. Uh, any two plus one proposal automatically means we can't get any new uh, legislation through for three years, which is a really long time to do that. Against, any speech against uh, turning committee? Nobody wants to speak, we can go ahead and vote on this. Yeah. The person in the back there. I just want to add to what was just said that it would take three years um, to pass, but with the committee, then it becomes four years, so we're extending this process. It's becoming longer and longer and more complicated and um, much more difficult for people to participate, and the whole idea of the emotion is to allow people to participate. So we're making things extremely complicated, and um, it, it sort of excludes people, I think. So um, I am against this idea. Uh, a speech in favor of the Senate Committee? One flaw with one plus one proposal that I'm concerned about is that there's no way to make a perfecting amendment. Very frequently we pass something and then when we've had a chance to think about it, we think of one or two little things we could tweak. And um, I don't think there's any way to do that. I, I stand corrected, but it doesn't seem like there's any way to do that in the current proposal. Speech uh, against the Senate Committee. This is just speech for and against the referral. Well, Harris, uh, I think this meeting in general has a responsibility to at least explore some of the issues. If we do choose to refer to committee tomorrow after some debate, A, you know, we'll have a chance to express some views. B, the committee will have some input to work on. I think in recent years we've had a little too much enthusiasm for, oh, we don't, that's too hard to talk about in this meeting, let's go refer to a committee, you can worry about it for us. We are the people who are meant to think about this, and if we are in this room, we should be invested a time to think about it. I move to amend this motion by striking the purpose of the day and merely replacing it with refer on this proposal. Is there a second? Second. Is there any objection to removing the specification that the committee is required to come up with a two plus, two plus one? But just a general for committee. Hearing no objection, the motion to commit is so amended. Uh, the speech is still on the motion to commit. Is there a speech, uh, based on that, is there a speech in favor of the motion to commit? Okay, uh, is there a second? Second. Uh, all those who still wish to speak to the question of committing, please raise your hand. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, speaking, I, I wish no, that's not really now. Um, it appears to be nobody wishing to speak. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he has the Dutch. I'm sorry. Uh, I said hold okay. uh, Thank you. Um, so there's a uh, we'll vote on the motion to call the question. All those in favor? Mr. Chairman, I believe I believe there are members who are confused about what you're stating. Sure. Uh, am I right? This is a parliamentary inquiry. That under our rules, when there's a motion to call the question or end debate, the chairman is asked uh, has to ask for a show of hands of those members who still want to speak to the question. Those are not people trying to gain the floor. It's just a quick show of hands of people who still wish to speak. Am I right? <laughs> you are. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the, the idea being to provide the members with more information to on which to base their vote on whether to call the question or not. Uh, so, those in favor of calling the question, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? There being more than two-thirds in favor, the question is called on the motion to commit. Uh, all those in favor of the motion to refer this to a committee to report back next year, please raise your hand. Next year. Uh, next, year. next year. All those in favor of referring it to a committee to report back. Point of order. What? I don't think we can. I don't think we can postpone things that way. Yeah. Uh, the delivery business meeting. Oh, well, hold on. No, 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 no,
Is there a second? Second. Yeah. To move and second it to refer this to a committee to report to tomorrow. Uh, is there any debate on this motion? Seeing none, those in favor of the committee, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it, and so be referred to committee to report back to the main business meeting tomorrow. Uh, in the absence of other instructions, uh, the chair will appoint the committee and uh, the chairman thereof, and the people should come up to the head table after this meeting to volunteer if they wish to do so. Uh, the committee will include the maker of the motion. Do we can move on to the next item? Yes. No, no. Uh, so if somebody wishes to set the print debate time for 12 minutes, they can still do that. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. 12, 15, 24. Any other values? Yes? 40. 40? <laughs> Any other items? 30. 30? Yes. Will the report of the committee be part of the debate time or will that be separate? Uh, I mean, there will hopefully be a written report and people can read it, but the, yes, the, the, the report of the committee is the extent that the committee speaks in favor of its report or something like that will be part of the debate time. Yep. Well, since I cannot guarantee when the committee would actually produce this report, I would, I would say that I can't guarantee that it will be available in written form. If they, since, you know, finish their deliberations one minute before the meeting is called to order, it might be difficult to do that. But uh, if you, well, one member of the committee is known who wants to say something. Mr. Chairman, since you designated me first, and then I believe me to be the chairman of the committee, the committee will take every effort to get the information to the secretary early enough to get it into a printed agenda tomorrow. Inasmuch as the chairman of the committee to which it's been referred has been a business meeting secretary and knows her pain. Yeah. <laughs> um, anything else before we vote on debate time limits? Uh, starting with the largest number going down. The 40, 30, 24, 15, 12. <laughs> Those in favor of 40 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Uh, <laughs> Thank you. 